Twiddle is a card from Magic's very first set that lets you tap or untap target artifact, creature, or land. In the more than three decades since Alpha, there have been several more blue cards that let you tap or untap permanents, and they're generally referred to as Twiddle effects because of this card. While tapping or untapping something isn't inherently powerful, it is a super flexible effect that can be used to lock down an opponent's permanent or untap one of yours. Untapping can be particularly powerful provided you have a permanent that can produce lots of mana. In all, there are 52 cards that let you tap or untap a permanent, and in this video we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. Use the links in the description to visit their store. I use a point system to rank cards in these videos. A first tier top eight is worth two points. This includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top eight is worth one point. That includes events like Regional Championships. At number 10, it's Retreat to Coral Helm. For two generic and a blue, it's an enchantment with Landfall, which means that when a land enters a battlefield under your control, you get one of two choices. You can scry one, or you can tap or untap target creature. So it's a bit more restrictive than the original Twiddle, since it only hits one card type, but it's a repeatable way to get this type of effect. And it's the first of many cards on this list that enabled combos. In the case of Retreat to Coral Helm, it was used in Modern alongside Knight of the Reliquary. The Knight has an activated ability where it taps and you sacrifice a Plains or Forest, then you search up a land and put it into play and then shuffle your library. That ability is great since it can grab any kind of land and the land enters untapped. If you have Retreat to Coral Helm in play with the Knight, that means each time you use the ability you can untap the Knight. And this means you can just keep using the ability over and over again provided you have lands to sacrifice to it. This can produce lots of mana for you in the early game, but the Knight also gets bigger for each land in your graveyard, so you can actually just grab every land out of your deck and make the Knight huge, and then if your opponent has anything that can block her, you can use the last few lands to tap them down and swing for lethal. These decks were pretty successful between 2015 in 2018 because like most good creature based combo decks it was kind of just a toolbox aggro deck that had this combo win condition that could come out of nowhere however the deck hasn't been a factor in modern since 2018. At number nine it's mind over matter for two generic and four blue it's an enchantment that lets you discard a card to tap or untap target artifact creature or land this is super powerful because after you pay to get it in play you never have to spend mana again to tap or untap one of those permanent types. There wasn't anything super insane for it to do when it first came out in Exodus, but a few months later, Urza's block was released, and that set featured both Hilarion Academy and Stroke of Genius. If you got a bunch of artifacts in play, and there were plenty of those, you could power out Mind Over Matter early with the Academy, and then untap the Academy and tap it again several times to draw a ton of cards with Stroke of Genius. Then you could use all those cards you drew to untap the Academy over and over again before casting another Stroke of Genius, this time making your opponent draw their entire deck. Other decks used High Tide alongside Mind Over Matter and Stroke of Genius to achieve a similar effect, Add to that the fact that Mind Over Matter could also be disruptive when the situation called for it, and you had a super busted card. The decks that helped spawn ushered in a period in late 1998 and early 1999 known as Combo Winter, a time when every single format was dominated by combo decks, many of them by Mind Over Matter combo decks. Lots of bands had to be handed down to get every format under control. At first, Mind Over Matter itself was left alone, and they went after Academy and Stroke of Genius, but there was still enough busted stuff you could do with Mind Over Matter that it got banned too in 1999 in Standard, Extended, and Legacy, and Restricted in Vintage. It got unrestricted in Vintage in 05 and unbanned in Legacy in 07, and it did see a little bit of play in Legacy High Tide in 2011, but even though it's legal in the Eternal formats these days, it hasn't put up top finishes anywhere since 2011. That's because it's just a little too expensive to be a viable way to go off with High Tide these days. At number 8 I've got two cards, the original Twiddle and Dream's Grip. I put them together not only because they have very similar effects, but also because they have an identical score as a result of being played in the exact same deck. So we already know what Twiddle does. Dream's Grip is Twiddle with Upside because it can tap or untap any permanent, and it also has Entwine for one generic, which means that if you pay that additional cost when you tap it, you get both modes. So you can pay one generic and a blue to untap one permanent and tap another one. Even though Twiddle is the much older card and has had tons more time to put up points, it didn't put up any top finishes until it started to see play in Modern in 2019 alongside Dream's Grip. These decks, sometimes called Twiddle Storm, look to repeatedly untap Lotus Field to ha look to repeatedly untap Lotus Field to cast a whole bunch of cards, including those in your graveyard using Underworld Breach, which lets you twiddle twice with these two cards. Eventually, you draw your whole deck and win with Thassa's Oracle. Twiddle and Dream's Grip are both still gaining points in Modern right now, so the original Twiddle has a very good chance at continuing to move up the list. At number 7, it's Teferi Who Slows the Sunset. 
For two generic, a white and a blue, he's a four loyalty planeswalker, and his plus one is where you'll find a twiddle-like effect. It lets you choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land, and you untap the chosen permanents you control, and tap the chosen permanents you don't control, and you gain two life. In other words, this is a repeatable twiddle that can untap or tap up to three different permanents, so it's kind of like three twiddles with two life stapled to it, albeit at sorcery speed. He's got other loyalty abilities too, of course. He's got a minus two that lets you look at your top three cards and put one in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library, and a minus seven that gives you an emblem that says, untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap step, and you draw a card during each opponent's draw step. While we saw a bit of play in standard control decks, most of Teferi's points have come in Pioneer Devotion to Green decks. And in that deck, we have seen yet another twiddle effect that was good because of a land that produces a bunch of mana. In this case, I'm talking about Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. You might be saying, why is this deck running Teferi if it's a Devotion deck? How can they even consistently cast it? And the answer is Oath of Nyssa, an enchantment that makes it easier for you to cast Planeswalkers. However, some bands led to Devotion to Green decks having Dory Formulate, and while they still exist in the format, Teferi isn't in them anymore, so it doesn't have any points since 2023. At number 6, it's Turnabout. For 2 generic and 2 blue, it's an instant, and when you cast it, you choose artifact, creature, or land, and then you either tap or untap all permanents of the chosen type target player controls. So it's sort of like a mass twiddle effect. It saw some play in Block Academy decks, as well as High Tide decks in Extended and Legacy. While it isn't quite as good at untapping just one busted land over and over again like some of the other cards on this list, it is better when all of your lands are producing extra mana, like on a turn where you cast High Tide. High Tide decks aren't exactly the best deck in Legacy, but they do put up top 8s in the format sporadically, so Turnabout is pretty likely to gain more points in the future. At number 5, it's Mero Rejeri. For 2 generic and a blue, it's a 2-2 that gives other merfolk you control plus 1 plus 1, and, whenever you cast a merfolk spell, you can tap or untap target permanent. Being a merfolk lord is already a pretty powerful thing since there are so many great merfolk out there, but adding a twiddle every time you cast one is some serious business. On a basic level, you can use it to tap down opposing blockers so your merfolk army can get in for a hit, but there are plenty of merfolk with flash too, so there's a whole slew of options available when it comes to using this effect. One of the sweetest things to untap though is Aether Vial, since it means you can use its ability more than once per turn cycle. Meryl Rejeri has been played in Merfolk decks in Standard Extended, Modern Legacy, and even Vintage, but it hasn't had a top 8 anywhere since 2017. At number 4, it's Fate Stitcher. For 3 generic and a blue, it's a 1-2 that you can tap to tap or untap another target permanent, and it has unearthed for 1 blue. This means you can pay that cost when it's in the graveyard to put it on the battlefield with haste and exile it at the beginning of the next end step. It feels pretty bad to cast this for 4 mana, but being able to bring it back to twiddle something for only 1 blue is pretty sweet. I didn't see any play in Standard or Extended, there just wasn't anything you could really do with this, so instead, the first format it ever saw play in was Magic's most powerful format, Vintage. Since 2010, it's been seeing play in that format in decks that use Bazaar of Baghdad. It synergizes amazingly well with it because you can pitch it to the Bazaar's activated ability, then you can unearth it and use the Bazaar again. When you combine this with Dredge, you can just throw a huge chunk of your deck into your graveyard, at which point you're probably just going to win with a bunch of free recursive creatures. It doesn't see play in today's Bazaar of Baghdad decks in Vintage, but that's okay, because it is seeing play in Modern, where it's gained most of its points in Jeskai Ascendancy decks. These decks are all about chaining together a bunch of spells with Ascendancy in play. Every time you cast a non-creature spell, Ascendancy gives your board plus one plus one and untaps your creatures. Obviously enough, if you're untapping Fate Stitcher, that means it can be used to untap something else, including your lands, and that makes it easier for you to keep on going, especially because the other creatures in the deck tend to produce mana. This usually results in you drawing as many cards as you want. However, the Stitcher doesn't have any top finishes so far in 2024. At number three, it's Pestermite. For two generic and a blue, it's a 2-1 with flash and flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you can tap or untap target permanent. As with most versions of this effect that let you tap or untap any permanent, Pestermite can do a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes flashing it in to tap down a land so your opponent can't interact on your turn is good, and sometimes you just want to get a blocker out of the way. In block and standard, most of its success came off of that efficiency and flexibility, plus having the fairy creature type, which was a big deal in those formats. However, Pestermite really made a name for itself in modern Splinter Twin decks. You could flash Pestermite in at the end of your opponent's turn, you can then untap and put Splinter Twin on it. Then you can tap the Pestermite to make a copy of itself. The copy can then untap the enchanted Pestermite, and you can continue this until you have enough flying attackers with haste to kill your opponent. The combo was eventually deemed too good for Modern, and Splinter Twin got banned out of the format in 2015, and it's been a long time since Pestermite has had a home in any format. 
And number two, it's Hidden Strings. For one generic and a blue, it's a sorcery, and it lets you tap or untap target permanent, and then you can tap or untap another target permanent. So it gives you the broadest twiddle-like effect, and it lets you do it twice. It also has Cypher, which means you can exile it when you cast it and encode it on a creature you control. If you do that, when that creature does combat damage to a player, its controller can cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. In other words, you stick this on a creature and get this spell for free anytime it hits your opponent, so you're likely to get more than just two twiddles out of it for only two mana. After getting printed in Dragon's Maze in 2013, Hidden Strings didn't see play anywhere for quite some time, but then Lotus Field got printed in 2019. I've already talked about Lotus Field decks, which have been a factor in Pioneer and Modern ever since then, and Hidden Strings is one of the best ways to untap it multiple times to produce lots of mana and really go off in a single turn. Sometimes you can even get value out of the Cypher copy. Hidden Strings is likely to keep gaining points in both Pioneer and Modern, and eventually it will be the number one card on this list. For now though, that card is... Deceiver Exarch. For two generic and a blue, it's a 1-4 with Flash, and when it enters, you can untap a permanent you control or tap a permanent an opponent controls. Like Pestermite, Deceiver Exarch's success has largely come because of how it interacts with Splinter Twin. However, the Exarch saw more play in Modern, as its much higher toughness made it far less risky to put the Splinter Twin on. Furthermore, it actually experienced a bit of resurgence in Legacy between 2021 and 2022, when Twin Exarch decks became relevant in the format for a time. However, it doesn't have any points since 2022, and it seems inevitable that Hidden Strings will pass it in the future. So, those are the best twiddle effects in Magic. Do you want to tap or untap some permanents? If so, check out the description, where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in this video. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to catch up on past videos, including many more that look at mechanics, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.